Good evening. Welcome to Athens City Council. Tonight is Thursday, December 29th, 2005. This evening, City Council is meeting in special session. It's on or about 7 p.m. We have three members of council present, which the law director has determined for the purposes that we are meeting tonight, there is a quorum. Ordinances for third reading. Ordinance 12005, an ordinance approving a planned unit development proposed by National Church Residences on Stimson Avenue and granting a variance. Member Sands. Mr. President, I move adoption of 012005. Um, <clears throat> to begin with, Mr. President, I, I'm going to read the ordinance. Um, I know some members of the audience and probably members at home don't realize the extent of this. Um, <clears throat> ordinance 012005, an ordinance approving a planned unit development proposed by National Church Residences on Stimson Avenue and granting a variance. Whereas on April 7, 2005, the Athens Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval of a planned unit development proposed by National Church Residences on Stimson Avenue, and whereas on May 23, 2005, the Athens City Council held a public hearing on said project, and whereas it is in the public interest to protect existing public infrastructure such as water, sewer, and storm sewer lines, and whereas there is a risk of flooding and flood damage based on the existing flood insurance study for the City of Athens, and it is advisable not to increase the risk of flooding, and whereas it is prudent to protect and maintain all existing topography in order to avoid the potential for increased risk of flooding, and whereas it is sound planning practice to provide suitable access to existing public facilities such as the bike path, and whereas it is sound planning practice to prepare for public transportation, including pedestrian and bicycle traffic, and whereas it is necessary to accommodate emergency services response to the proposed use, and whereas it is advisable to facilitate access to community facilities and preserve open space, and whereas it is necessary to protect the rights of all property owners and assure compatibility of all uses in the project area, and whereas it is necessary to minimize accelerated stormwater runoff, erosion, and sediment pollution that could affect adjoining property owners or water resources, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Athens, Section 1, that pursuant to Athens City Code, Title 21, Sections 21, 0918, 0920, 0924, and 0925, the plan unit development proposed by National Church Residences is hereby approved with the following variance. A variance from Athens City Code, Section 2311, Table B, to permit 169 parking spaces for 151 units where a total of 302 spaces are required, an acknowledgement that 50 of these spaces shall be reserved for employee parking. Section 2, the plan unit development proposed by National Church Residences shall comply with all Planning Commission requirements. Section 3, the plan unit development shall comply with the following safeguards and conditions. Number 1, maintain the existing railroad berm at its current elevation. And, and repair any disturbance caused by development. Number two, maintain all existing trees and vegetative buffers adjacent to the property perimeter and replace any damaged buffer plantings. Number three, provide a final plat to be acknowledged and signed by the Athens City Planning Commission, serve as safety director and city council, and recorded with the Athens County Recorder, along with a certified copy of this ordinance. Four, Construct a bike path connector to be maintained by the owner or leaseholder from Morris Avenue to the existing bike path with a design and location reviewed and approved by the city service safety director. Five, there shall be no disturbance of any public utilities, including but not limited to water lines, sewer lines, or storm sewer lines, nor encroachment to any easements for these facilities. Six, determine the location of the Morris Avenue right-of-way and not encroach thereon without the expressed consent of Athens City Council by ordinance. Seven, 
construct a sidewalk along the entire property line adjacent to the Stimson Avenue right-of-way that conforms to established standards and specifications of the City of Athens. Eight, execute and record with the Athens County Recorder an access agreement between the owner and the Athens County Red Cross in order to maintain existing and established routes of vehicular traffic. Nine, develop an emergency evacuation plan submitted for review and approval by the Athens City Fire Chief after consultation with the Athens County Emergency Management Agency. 10. There shall be no importation of off-site fill material used to elevate the property unless, the city, unless such material is obtained for, from within the City of Athens Special Flood Hazard Area. 11. Submit an approvable plan that conforms to the requirements of Athens City Code Title 27 land development said compliance specifically addressing all requirements for sediment and erosion sediment and erosion control stormwater control and stormwater detention 12 construct a secondary emergency means of ingress adjacent to morris avenue reviewed and approved by the athens city fire chief that precludes use by any by use precludes use by other than emergency service personnel 13, conduct additional soil studies and incorporate findings into the development and design of structural footers and foundations and account for any additional structural loads related to possible public utility maintenance. 14, submit an approvable excavation and or fill plan that conforms to the requirements of Athens City Code Title 25, Flood Damage Pre Prevention, in Athens City Code Title 27 land development that specifically includes erosion protection measures related to water velocities caused by a flood event. 15, there shall be no activity related to site development that could cause adverse impact to the existing public bike path. 16, there shall be constructed and maintained barriers or fences approved by the City Service Safety Director along existing drainage ways and ditches that could be considered an attractive nuisance. 17, prior to commencing site development work, National Church residences will, will post a performance bond in the amount of $200,000 according to the terms set forth in Athens City Code Section 210802. And 18, National Church residences will form a neighborhood advisory committee prior to the development of final plans to include residents of the Near East Side area and to include, but not limited to, residents of the National Church Residences Plan Unit Development. The advisory committee will be in existence for as long as National Church Residences manages the proposed retirement center. Section 4, this ordinance shall be in full force and effect at the earliest moment permitted by law upon its passage and approval by the mayor. The very first whereas said that we received <clears throat> this recommendation from the Planning Commission on April 7th. It's now December 29th. That's over eight months that this council, which unfortunately is represented at this time by the three of us, this council has listened to um, members of our community in public meetings, um, I, these are letters and copies of the emails. That's all that's in here from, from people who wanted to express their support for this development and people who had concerns about this development. Um, <clears throat> we have spent a large amount of time putting together this ordinance with all these conditions. The developer has agreed to these conditions. Uh, we have heard recently some concerns that we're rushing into this. After eight months, I'm, I choose to differ. I don't think we're rushing into anything. Ca city councils, and particularly the Planning and Development Committee's responsibilities are to receive um, the concerns of citizens, some some proposal possibly um, listen to their concerns to their um, suggestions 
take that into account, formulate an ordinance, and vote on that ordinance. That's what we're doing now. Um, I think that's our responsibility, and I think we should do that now. Thank you. Further comments from council members? I'd just like to add uh, to what Jim was saying. I would never make a rash decision on something like this. I felt that every member of council has spent months trying to research, trying to learn how to study flood charts, how to, uh, speaking to citizens, neighbors, students, and the developers to come to this conclusion that this is something that we've worked to, to cooperate, to develop something that's unique to our community and something that will uh, provide a way to keep part of our community here throughout the ages. Um, I think this is a segment of the population that has been leaving Athens in the past and we'd really like to keep them here in the city and I, I think it's very valuable and I believe after all of these months and uh, this is probably the toughest decision I think any of us have ever had to make weighing the pros and cons tonight's the night to to make the decision vote on the ordinance and have it finished with the council that has done all of the work instead of passing it on to future council that is relatively fresh and new Amber Patterson. Um, Mr. President, I would just like to add um, appreciation for the fact that we're able to have this special meeting. I felt it was very important that this council act on this. Um, it wasn't our choice or our doing to reduce the size of council. Um, but I, I do appreciate this opportunity and the mayor for calling the meeting. Other comments on from council? Yeah. Member of the city uh, of the audience that wishes to speak before council, we ask to hear really uh, new comments if there are any that you have to make, although all of us would find that hard to believe they're still out there. <laughs> uh, we ask that uh, you council rules provide that you state your name, neither your address or your affiliation. Those wishing to speak, please come forward. <clears throat> You're next, David. My name is Gene Amorell. I live at 187 North Congress and I'm employed by the university. <clears throat> I'd like to make a few comments regarding the history of this proposal that brings us here tonight. I will conclude with an alternative that I hope can be heard by all sides of the issue. People have worked very hard for many years to create a residential retirement community in Athens, something I believe everyone in the community agrees would be a legitimate and welcome addition to our community. When the university made its offer of land, the project became a real possibility. At the same time, the people of Athens were working diligently on a new comprehensive plan. <clears throat> Neighborhoods, transportation, especially the needs of pedestrians and bicyclists, and floodplain issues were high on the list of people's concerns. Planning Commission and Council moved ahead on a major project before the comprehensive plan was in place and without a plat submitted by NCR. Opposition quickly arose from citizens who would otherwise be supportive of the idea of such a project when they felt that their efforts on behalf of the city were not being represented. Those who have been working to create the retirement community reacted by accusing those who oppose the existing proposal to be ageist and more concerned about an empty piece of land than providing for the retirement of the city's elders. Those in opposition now feel that a few of the more influential members of the community along with the university have demanded that the project be passed regardless of the liability of the city and council members and in disregard of the process of good governance. Result has been that a vote either way tonight brings the real threat of litigation, holding up for a long time and continued bad feelings within the community. People on either side feel like those on the other side are not listening and not recognizing what they see as their legitimate interests. Based upon this history, I would like to make the following proposal. Table the vote tonight and give all parties a chance to cool off. In January, bring all interested parties together, perhaps facilitated by members of the Athens Mediation Service, to work together to find a common ground, come up with a plan for a retirement facility that will be guided by the comprehensive plan and by mutual respect for the opinions and feelings of all stakeholders. Athens is indeed a very special place, due in large part to the thoughtful participation of its citizenry in the process of governance. 
Let this project be one that will be looked at in years to come, not as a time of recrimination and divisiveness, but as a shining example of the fruit of our collective <coughs> wisdom and respect for one another. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. David. David Ingram, 120 Morris Avenue. Um, so, uh, I, I think if you've decided that the, the green space is not to be valued more highly than development, then you should vote in favor of this ordinance as it stands. I agree with Jim Stanton. You've spent a lot of time developing this. You've spent a lot of time putting in a, a lot of work in details, which, in my opinion, would make this a worthwhile center. I still value green space over the retirement center. But if your decision is that you value the retirement center, I strongly recommend that all three of you vote in favor of it. I think that would send, send the best message out there that this is something that the city is going to support and it's going to uh, move forward. I would argue that in fact the fact that three members are absent tonight is a sign that there will not be litigation over this decision. I would hope there will not be litigation. I think there has been a lot of debate over this. As I said, if you decide that on balance it's better to have a retirement community there, then please all three of you vote in favour of it. Thank you. Christy Truly, 121 Morris Avenue. I just have a couple of procedural questions. Now that we, now that the Ethics Commission has decided um, who must recuse themselves from this vote and, and who does not need to, I just wonder if that possibly means that the entire debate needs to go back to the committee stage because those people who are not allowed to vote tonight obviously were in the debate, the discussion, and the early voting in committee stage and also doing the first and second reading. So it seems to me that if they're not allowed to vote this time, they probably weren't allowed to vote or shouldn't have been allowed to vote previously. So I wonder if it needs to all go back to planning committee stage. I will have to, and not just for you, but for everyone else, you're able to ask questions, but they've got to be rhetorical in nature. This is an opportunity for citizens to give their opinion we will not enter into any debate. That has well, been that, a long-standing policy of council. I understand that. Sure. I guess it was without Mr. Hunter here. I guess I don't know if it's rhetorical or not, but um, I feel we that that might be a question rhetorical. that needed to be asked. Okay. Secondly, I wonder if the Ethics Commission decision itself um, might have been incomplete. Also a rhetorical question because obviously anybody here won't be able to answer. Um, but I wonder if it's incomplete because if an, o, if an OU employee or spreading it further, any employee of a development or anything that comes before council um, who is also on council, so if anybody that might have had a conflict of interest um, on any vote coming up because this is going to affect us far into the future, which I think a lot of people do realize, if that vote were against a project and not in favor of a project. I don't know how that could be conflict of interest. So I just wanted to state those two things. Perhaps Mr. Hunter can look into that. Thank you. Other citizens wishing to speak? Susan? I just feel like um, I need to speak. I live at 191 East State Street. And I've been watching this debate, and I apologize to the folks who are for the community center for not being more active, because I am a member of the Near East Side neighborhood, not the association, but the neighborhood. And I can tell you from living in the neighborhood since 1987, the vast majority of our neighborhood is not against this project. And I think there are some, there's a vocal minority who come here and speak, um, and many of us are, you know, doing trombone lessons and all kinds of piano and and sports and we don't have time and I apologize for that but when I'm out in, in my neighborhood and in my community and in this neat east side um, I hear a vast majority for this and very welcoming of the senior center also um, in the past I've lived as I've said I've lived 
in the Near East Side since 87. I've seen this happen over and over again. People came here complaining about the bank that's being built on Stimson Avenue. It's a beautiful bank. It's much better than the, than the dumps that were there before. <laughs> so, you know, I, I appreciate some of this development. Um, it was definitely not green space. It was being hurt uh, when this bank went in. And it's, it's going to probably not be as loud as what the three dumpy rentals were like. Um, comments and I and again I apologize I haven't been more vocal about this but I but seniors become um, prisoners in their own homes and I can't picture a better place than where they can walk to the library where they can walk to the hardware store well it's, there's no more hardware store where they can walk to <laughs> the <laughs> convenience store it's a very nice thing <laughs> um, the post office um, I I know that um, Parking isn't really a problem because most people that are in a center like that aren't able to drive. And our East Side neighborhood is a great place to live. It's great having students, it's great having families, and it would be great to have seniors too, more seniors. And um, I don't want to see them have to be put somewhere where they can't walk to the library, can't walk on the bike path, can't walk to the um, post office and the convenience stores and all that we have, campus, OU's campus. So I enthusiastically support this, and I truly think if I was to go door to door in my neighborhood, I could, I could show all of you that, that there's a majority um, that, that want this to be placed there. There's plenty of green space. Jack Ellis, uh, Mulligan Road. Didn't really mean to come and speak tonight, just to, to listen. And I, I have listened. Uh, I've said before that I've been involved, directly or indirectly, with trying to bring a retirement community to Athens for something like 20 years. And with my track record, perhaps I shouldn't be up here speaking. But I just wanted to remind council and everyone here that as we look back and reflect over just the, the last couple of years, for example, there have been two administrations of Ohio University have endorsed this project by making that property available. There's been uh, an endorsement by the Board of Trustees of the <coughs> University, by Student uh, Senate uh, of the University, just on one side. Uh, there's been represent representatives of Athens from throughout the community of Athens virtually at, at all of these council <coughs> meetings, not to mention there's been the Near East Side people as well. But we're talking about what's to benefit the total community of Athens. The Athens County Commissioners have unanimously recommended this. <coughs> and also the, there was a general refer referendum that, that for the entire community of Athens voted on this. It was a, I think everybody understands, it was a veiled attempt to stop this development by uh, attempting to stop development within the floodplain. Unanimously it was rejected. I think that reflects the wishes of the community of Athens to support this project. The one thing that Mr. Ingram said that I would agree with is I think the noble thing would be for the be, to be a unanimous decision uh, in support of this ordinance uh, this evening. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. I'm Patricia Stokes. I live at 67 Morris Avenue. And uh, before I get on to the main thing I wanted to say, I would like to respond to the uh, notion of going door to door because I actually have gone door to door in my street. And I wouldn't say there's 100% opposition on Morris Avenue, but it's probably more around 80%. 
and the 20% that's for the project are people who are in the senior demographic, um, some of whom have friends who would like to move into that, and I understand that. Um, but I think it's a, it's a gross distortion to say that it's a, a splinter group or some sort of a, a small but vocal minority, because I've talked to people up and down, handing them out flyers, which brought us into conversation on a, on a, a couple of occasions uncomfortably, because it was people who um, oppose the projects, but they're good neighbors. We try to be good neighbors back, and we agreed to just let those differences be and continue being good neighbors. But again, it's, you know, I think that the, the numbers tonight um, of the people who support this project would be about doubled if we didn't have practically each of us a spouse at home with children um, who are, you know, who are not here because they have family responsibilities. So <coughs> with that said, um, with this idea in mind that it's not simply a, a splinter group who opposes this, I'd like to address um, the, the question of, of what's a, a public interest here and what's a private interest and how these things are being balanced here. I think that the um, argument against the center has been presented often too narrowly as being simply about green space. And people have rightly pointed out that that does um, clash, uh, a development in this area would clash with the uh, strong recommendations by uh, the, the comprehensive plan, which uh, is about to be approved, we, we hope. <coughs> but that's not the only impact. Um, there are flooding impacts potentially. Um, the inputs into the flood model are all uh, questionable enough um, that I don't think that that question has been put to rest uh, permanently. There are traffic impacts. I don't think anybody uh, will argue that there will, will be zero impact um, from having a major development in our, in our uh, neighborhood. Um, and there's also the impact of the city basically giving up, if you vote as well for the right-of-way ordinance, uh, giving up rights to that land, which is publicly controlled land at this point, and that is land that has real value on the open market. So on the one hand, we have some fairly significant impacts, all of which relate to the scale of the project. If this were a, uh, say, 15-unit uh, complex, we wouldn't be looking at three units, uh, three stories tall, towering over the neighborhood. We wouldn't be looking at the same kind of impacts because it wouldn't have the same footprint, so on and so forth. The fact that this is a, a major scale development <coughs> will change uh, the nature of the uh, neighborhood. The response to that has been all along, well, if it's a major scale development, please let it be then for a good cause, for the cause of housing for, for elders in our community, which, by the way, even those of us who oppose having this project built here, we do support that goal overall of a decent, good place for people to live. We know full where, well that we're going to be getting older too and it's going to come sooner than we think. Um, that's not the question. The question is the scale of this and the placement of the project and the kinds of impacts that that, that is bound to have um, as a result of it. The argument has been, well, if not this, it's going to be dorms. Let's face it, dorms too would need a variance. That too would have to come before council. Um, that's not something that the university could simply bulldoze in and, and uh, erect in that place. <coughs> so those are, are the impacts. Those are the, the publicly born impacts, some of which affect the Near East neighborhood selectively, some of which are impacts that affect the entire city, such as loss of um, open spaces, loss of um, potential floodplain, and so on. Um, on the other side of it are the interests of a group of people who, uh, as I've said before, do have legitimate interests in this, but it's not the interests of the whole community. And I think that uh, before, I, I think there hasn't been enough, I, I know you've work, been working on this, not just for the past eight months, but for the preceding year before it even came before uh, the Planning Commission. And I appreciate that, as everyone does. But at the same time, I don't think there's been a lot of discussion about what's going to be uh, received in return for giving up this right away if we uh, go ahead and do that. I'm not sure if I'm speaking out of turn because you're now talking about the basic ordinance, but we all know they do belong together. Um, and that land is worth anywhere from a couple hundred thousand dollars uh, on upward. Um, so again, that's another public impact. So I just ask you to um, bear those things in mind um, as you go to vote. I don't know that I'm, gonna, I'm changing anybody's mind with this, but I do think that those impacts are more than just green space. They are things that affect the whole community. And council does ultimately have uh, an obligation to the entire community as well and to weigh those interests against each other. Very last thing, there was a lot of discussion last time on um, needing an up and down vote, um, as if that were somehow the hallmark of democracy. Well, sometimes an up and down vote is not a hallmark of democracy. Sometimes it's a signal that 
a process has not worked well and people are just trying to get it over with, be done with it. And uh, I think it's, it's a fallacy to confuse those two things. All right, thanks for your time and thanks for your time over these last months too. Thank you. Other comments? Is there anyone else wishing to, yes sir. Hi, my name is Bernard Debatin. I uh, live on uh, 67 Morris Avenue and uh, I work with The Ohio University. Um, I've been following this for quite a while even though I have not uh, shown up here for a number of reasons that my wife who just spoke uh, has uh, already pointed out. I want to uh, say a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I, uh, I am very happy to hear that uh, you are taking your uh, job here very seriously and you talked about responsibility and I think this is very important. In this respect, I would like to say two things. One is, um, you said you've been working on that for eight months and it's time to come to a decision. You can't uh, basically let that go on any longer. I would ask if it's really necessary to do that in the situation that we have right now, which I find very concerning, and that is uh, a quorum that is not even half of what's normally here. Even if the director, the law director, Gary Hunter, uh, thinks that this is a um, whatever legal, legally okay thing, uh, I would very much ask if it's an ethically okay thing, if you can live with this situation or not. Um, I don't think it's a good idea in any case. As uh, one of the other speakers said before, uh, a vote under these conditions will only lead to, um, no matter which way it's going, to a situation where people are very unhappy on at least one side. And it's a question if that is desirable uh, in a project or with respect to a project that has been discussed that much and where people have been talking that much about it. Um, it also raises the question at what point um, a council doesn't have a quorum anymore. Is it like two people or one person? I mean, how far do you want to go down with that before um, a quorum is not given anymore? Uh, the other thing I wanted to uh, say too is that I would like to uh, again also address the issue of public concerns uh, as far as uh, right of way and other things like that are going because obviously, or as far as I'm uh, informed um, this has a lot of implications that seem not to have been in the discussion. It hasn't been discussed pu publicly nor has it seemed to be discussed in here such as uh, the value of the land that is being uh, basically given away freely and uh, whether this is a good policy to give away public land to a private uh, developer uh, and to a private outfit that um, may or may not have uh, uh, or may or may not be worth to have that kind of support. So I would, I would think that is a question that has to be or should be addressed before giving away um, that kind of public uh, land. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Others wishing to speak? Vicki Madsen, I'm a homemaker at 32 Sunnyside. Um, there was this place that was developed by this organization in Canton called Sheldon Place that seems to have had some pretty serious problems with the building. And I was wondering if you might have considered that the Canton Town Council might not have had full plans when they approved this project that fell down. And maybe you are moving a little too fast because you still don't have a full plan from them to vote on. So you're voting on something that's not a final plan. Do you know what you're buying? I don't think I would buy an unfinished product unless it was something I wanted to work on myself, like a craft project. 
Thank you. Others? My name is Ron Black, uh, 13 Warwick Lane, Athens. <clears throat> I've talked to you several times in the past, not recently, but in, and I could repeat everything I've said before. This is the right plan, the right place, the right time, and uh, at the right price. Um, the comments about the Giving the giving the land away. Uh, what is the what is the width of a street? Which is what the the land is. Maybe sixty feet at the maximum. <laughs> uh, I don't know what developer can do much with that, something that's long and narrow like that. But anyway, be that as it may, uh, we people and city councils and townships have give have closed right of ways for people you know, for eons, so it's nothing new, nothing different. I do want to thank the council for all that they've put into this, and uh, particularly for Sarah, who doesn't need to do this, <laughs> but we're, we're certainly glad that she's there and, and is willing to uh, be a part of this city, and we congratulate her on all the awards she has won. Thank you. Other comments? Uh, my name is Mark Lehman. I live at 84 South May on the east side, near east side. Um, I come again to speak uh, on behalf of uh, younger families from the from that neighborhood. Uh, first, I want to mourn uh, that the thing's been rhetorically framed as young people against old people. I think older people, I think that's when younger people against older people, and I think that's been uh, a tragedy of the whole thing that, uh, that I hate to see happen. You know, I have a next door neighbor who probably lives 15 feet from me, and uh, she's a senior, and uh, you know, I clean out her gutters, my boys mow her lawn for free, and it's, a, it's not a one-way deal. We get a lot from her because my kids, unfortunately, their grandparents are a long way off, and it's great to have her talk to my uh, eight-year-old daughter, and it's been a great deal. We are not against seniors uh, at, at, by any stretch of the imagination. What I've wanted from the beginning, what I've called for is community. That's what, we, that's what I want to see happen in Athens is community, and community takes diversity. The young, the old, the uneducated, educated, rich, poor, living together. That's where you gain social capital and you have real life. That's where you have community. And that's what I've wanted to see. That's what I've talked about uh, many times here, that we should go back, work together to build it's a commun uh, project on this land that's for seniors but has something to offer everybody. You know, that little strip of land, I've heard, talked to one appraiser who said that thing's worth a million bucks. I wish my lot was 60 feet wide and it's not nearly that long. And we, the city, are giving it away for nothing uh, to serve a small slice of what should be the Athens community. And all we're saying is give us the other contingencies, other parts of that community, something better in return. Um, but I, 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 I mourn the fact that that's not happening, that we're losing that. And um, because as it is, instead of having that kind of a participatory process all along, instead of just the university and participation with those who are going to benefit from this thing, instead of working in that kind of a group, we've had it, what we, from our perspective, jammed down on us because it seemed like they had the power to do it. Well, so what do you end up with? Instead of community, instead of togetherness, we end up with a big fight, right? My good friend, Trisha Lockman, I thought very respectfully talked in front of this council last week about her street, Mill Street, uh, becoming all students, and now she can barely live there. She sat down. Someone profanely called her, swore at her, and stuck their tongue out at her. And I'm thinking, Lord have mercy on what has happened in our community in the, on the east side. And it's happened because this process has stunk from day one. This has not been a democratic process open to everybody. 
And so now what do you have? You've got a fight because a bad process has brought it on one side, try to jam it through. Now the other side's ha gonna have to jam back. So I hate to do it. I hate our litigious society. I hate it that the courts run the show, but we are gonna take the thing to court. This is not going away. As a, as a member of the Athens community, I <coughs> declare that this is illegal. This should have never gotten out of the Planning Commission. The city code, Athens City Code 21.09.15, Planning Commission must obtain a final plan that includes engineering feasibility, studies, building plans, landscaping plans, et cetera, et cetera, before it can get out of the Planning Commission. Should not even be here. One of you looked us in the eye and said, I will never vote on this until we have the plans. What are you thinking about voting on it now? We do not have the plans. You're going to give away our right of way, our uh, piece of leverage against the big powers that be without a plan. That is insane. That cannot happen. And it's illegal. So we, we will take it to court. Uh, we have no choice. And I hate it because it's a fight. It's everything I don't want out of Athens. It's everything I think Athens can, can be n not be. We can have a, a chance to have seniors living on that thing in a little bit smaller of a development with a park there that brings seniors and their parent, kids and their parents together. And, we, or we, and something for students. We can, that piece of land can bring us all together. Instead, it's made it ugly. And what I don't want us to forget is all we have to do is go back and start and do it better in a more legal, transparent, honest way. And I think we can build a good thing on there. Young people, old people, kids, students together. Thank you. Other people wishing to speak? This fail? Yes, sir. My name is Bruce Steiner, and I live at 14 North May um, Avenue. It is, of course, the case that Athens, as we all know, has its full complement of underemployed lawyers. And it is, of course, the case that if a particular group perhaps senses defeat in a deliberative body, uh, its natural tendency is to resort to the courts. I mean, from sandbox days on, the I'll sue you cry, uh, of course, uh, has been uh, frequently uh, employed. Now, anyone is free, I suppose, who has stand sufficient standing in the law uh, to bring a lawsuit for almost any reason uh, in our country, and I'm glad uh, that that is so. But I do not think that the explicit threat of lawsuits should paralyze a deliberative body uh, like this, uh, should intimidate it, or should uh, prevent its taking whatever action it thinks is appropriate. And I hope that after what is a very, very lengthy discussion, that council will proceed and take an up or down vote on this matter. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak, Ms. Vail? My name is Christine Fall and I live on Morris Avenue. I have talked from the beginning of this process in the Planning Commission about how important planning and process is to not only this project but other projects that are coming down the line that will affect every single person in Athens. Every single person. Young, old, dog owner, child owner, you know, celibate or married. It doesn't matter. Process matters. The process that this thing has followed has failed. It is a failed process. It doesn't matter that it took a year. It doesn't matter it took nine months. One of the problems is 
partial, partially of the problem is whenever information was asked for, it took four or five weeks for it to come. That creates a long time. Process is not time. Process are the steps you go through. The Planning Commission did not do their job in this process. They passed it out of Planning Commission without the required, legally required plans, engineering studies. And this has large engineering obstacles. We're talking about fill. We're talking about drainage ditches. We're talking about a lot of different things. That process failed. Council got it. People say, we worked on this and we have all these conditions, therefore the process worked. I say the conditions show the process failed. It failed in the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission should have required the people, the NCR, to have an evacuation plan required, an evacuation plan that is okayed by the chief fire head because there are other places on the floodplain that are going to require evacuation at the same time. <clears throat> that was a condition that could fail because a majority vote has a supermajority has to pass the whole ordinance. The fencing around the drainage ditch was one of those that could fail because a supermajority has to pass it. There are several conditions that may not even go if a supermajority does not pass it. That is a failed process. Now you say, oh well, well, let's just vote on it. But what does this do to the future projects that are coming to Athens that are going to affect the south side, that are going to affect the near east side, that are going to affect the west side? If this passes as it stands now, it changes the rule of law in Athens. Developers will come in and say, we do not have to give engineering plans. We do not have to give final plans for the project that's coming up in front of council. So is every council meeting now going to be filled with conditions that will have to be passed by supermajority? That is a failed process. This is a failed process that's going to come back and haunt future councils in every section of the city. It doesn't matter whether the process was about a senior center or whether there was going to be a dog pound built there. It's the process that matters. The process failed. The ordinance show it. The right-of-way ordinance shows there is not even a promise of a third of an acre. NCR could turn around and say, we need it all. The city could be giving away all that land for nothing. The process has failed. It's setting up a change in our laws. It's changing our precedent. And because of that, because the process failed, this has to go back to Planning Council. It cannot go further. The right-of-way ordinance cannot even be amended because you guys have ran it out to the final day. We could not even amend it tonight to change the, the problems that are associated with it because there's no more time. The process has failed. And if you vote on it tonight, you have failed the process. And everybody wow. in Athens County <coughs> will suffer. Other comments? Is there anyone else wishing to speak before council? Hello, my name is Haley Butera and I act as corporate general counsel to Healthcare Industries Corporation, but tonight I hear, I'm here to represent the citizens of Athens. I'm here mainly just to make you aware that there is legal counsel we are going to be actively involved in this process from here on out. We feel that regulations have not been followed and when regulations are not followed, that sets a big precedent for what's to come. Who do you represent? I represent Healthcare Industries Corporation. But Is that the for profit company? Let's we're not going to get into a debate here. But tonight I'm here on behalf of the citizens of Athens. I have, I have consulted, I have consulted with several citizens of Athens today regarding concerns and procedure that can go on from here. What steps can go from here tonight? And I'm, I'm merely here to make you aware 
that this has gained attention from outside cities, outside sources, and we're prepared to take the next steps. Be that referendum or administrative appeal, we're prepared to take both steps. Bring it on. Thank you. Is there others wishing to speak before council? Seeing none. Yes, sir. Thanks for letting me sneak it under the wire. Uh, my name is Doug Getz, and I live on the Near East Side, 106 Maplewood Drive. And uh, I believe you've heard from my wife, Elaine. She's been here a lot. Um, and I've been here once. But there is a lot of animosity. I almost hesitated to speak because I don't like animosity. I don't like conflict. And But the message I brought today was one where I thought we could try to come together a little bit, and that's why I wanted to speak. If you vote down the right of way, it's not the end of the process. It doesn't mean a retirement center can't be built there. It just means that it would have to go back and perhaps negotiate further with the Near East Side. And if you look at where the right of way is placed, if you didn't give them the, if you didn't pass the right of way ordinance, um, you would essentially divide the space in half. You can make half of it a retirement center, and you can make the other half green space that could be used by the Near East Side as well as members of the Retirement Center. And also, I want to add, before I start talking, I want to say this, is that I'm not anti-senior, and I don't think the seniors are anti-young people. I'm, I'm sure they would not want to see green space taken away from people who are using it. And I think that if we could reach a compromise, and I think the way to initiate the compromise, initiate the dialogue, is to vote down the right away at this point, and then say, okay, well, let's go back, you know? We've talked about that land being worth a million dollars. Well, you know, we're trying to get soccer fields down along Hocking River, and I've heard it's 250,000. That's 125 from NCR and 125 from OU. Okay? So maybe something like that could be worked out. But I think if you vote down the right way, then that doesn't mean it's the end, but we can negotiate further about um, issues of green space and still have the retirement center there. And so then maybe everybody could be happy and it could be more like uh, Mayberry. <laughs> Is there anyone else wishing to speak before council this evening? Seeing none, all those in favor of adoption of ordinance 12005. Aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ordinance passes by three to zero. Ordinance 13305. An ordinance granting a revocable license to Ohio University to allow a planned unit development that will encroach on the city right away. Member Sands. Uh, Mr. President, move adoption of O13305. Second. Um, this is indeed an ordinance that uh, grants a revocable license. Not giving away the the um, right of way, just the use to the right to use it for a, an amount of time. Um, according to this ordinance, the mayor is authorized to execute and deliver a, a, li a revocable license agreement to the law director of Ohio University and National Ch Church Residences, which will permit National Church Residences. Um, <coughs> to construct and operate on this right-of-way, uh, which is leased, which will be leased from Ohio University, a planned unit development or continuing care retirement community. Um, section 2 has some language that says the licensee, which is Ohio University and its successors and assigns, um, shall agree that the city of Athens has the rights to maintain and install, replace its utility lines and the city shall not be held responsible for any damages that might occur during that. Section three, this revocable license shall be in effect as long as the licensed property is leased to National Church residences or an affiliate controlled by them, their mortgagees, successors, and assigns, um, and, there, and there is no change of use of the property from a planned unit development for senior citizens age 55. And finally, a copy of this ordinance shall be recorded with the Athens County Recorder. Um, 
actually the discussion of this ordinance has <coughs> crept into the discussion of the earlier ordinance and um, I, I think I have nothing else to add at this point. Anything from other council members? I, I just would like to comment. Uh, Jim did briefly say that this is not a, a gift. It is a um, use of the right of way and can be revoked. And one of the points that's come up and, and I said as well is it's rather difficult to revoke a building. Um, but one of the, the things that we've talked about is that the uh, NCR is, has talked about giving about a third of an acre towards the green space and the actual area that the building is on equals approximately that space. So the rest of the, the uh, land would be redeemable for us if they were no longer there. Other comments from council members? I, I don't think I have anything add to add to, to Carol and Jim. I just sort of second what they said. Is there anything really that uh, any member of audience would like to add about this ordinance that really has not already been said on previous ordinance? Yeah, I just want to say it's, uh, Could we have people that haven't spoken tonight? Chris Pyle, 80 South Shannon. I just want to say that that uh, the land that's promised one third was never in writing. It's just been said that it's going to be there. And it used to be an acre. Now it's one third. I just want the city council to take that under advisement. Thanks, Chris. Other members? All those in favor of adoption of Ordinance 13305? Aye. 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 Those opposed? The ordinance is adopted 3 zip. Having addressed all items on our agenda tonight, we stand adjourned.